Good morning. How's everybody doing out there? Look at the beautiful faces in the crowd. Look at the beautiful attendees that we have, our entrepreneurs that we will showcase today. My name is Marcus Shaw and I'm the CEO of Colab, and I'd like to welcome everybody to this year's Will This Float Black Founders Edition. Being an entrepreneur can sometimes be like fighting a lonely uphill battle, even in the best of times. And that's why we hold this event, Will This Float? Often about giving people the exposure that they need and leveling the playing field for some of our brightest entrepreneurs. And to make the world more accessible for their products and their opportunities. We are so grateful for this year's sponsors and partners, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee, EPB, TVA, Elliott Davis, Erlanger Health Systems, Unum, University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, and uh, the Chambliss Startup Group. Again, without these partners, this day wouldn't be possible. Now, to this event, we had over 40 submissions, and we're bringing seven of the most promising entrepreneurs to you, both entrepreneurs that are starting from, from the ground up and entrepreneurs that have already launched their platform and are out in the market, but could use a little extra exposure and a little extra opportunity, and so we're bringing them to you today. Today we'll be hearing how they're gonna make an impact with their products and services in the market and rewarding with cash prizes and other opportunities to support their business. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Colab's Chief of Staff, Katie Hendricks. Thank you, Marcus. You guys, I'm so excited. This is one of my favorite events at Startup Week where we get to hear from founders, where they get to pitch, and you guys get to be part of it and hear exactly um, what they're doing with their business. So uh, we just a bit of housekeeping before we get going. This is a webinar, so you guys who are attendees, you can't talk, but you can participate by keeping things going in the chat. So you guys give shout outs and, and do your energy, do your claps through the chat, please. Um, additionally, this event is being recorded, so we will be able to share it afterwards. So just, just note on that. So we're thrilled that y'all are here today working with entrepreneurs and helping them look and race for capital is one of, the favorite, one of the favorite parts of my job. So I'm thrilled to be here today. So let's move forward and get to meet our judges. So we have three judges today. We're super thrilled to have them join us. Um, from here in Chattanooga, we have Alexis Willis. She's the Director of Small Business and Entrepreneurship at the Chattanooga Chamber. Alexis, if you'll give us a little wave so everyone can see you. Awesome. Um, Jonathan Bragdon is the founder and general partner at Capacity Capital. Jonathan, if you'll give a, a wave as well, he's here in Chattanooga. Awesome. And then Justin Dawkins is one of the founders and managing partners at CoLab Capital. He's based in Atlanta and we're thrilled to have him. So Justin, if you could give a wave as well. Great, well welcome. Those are our amazing judges. And um, they're gonna be listening to all the pitches today. It's gonna be um, three minutes for pitches and then the judges will have two minutes for question and answer after the pitch. So they'll be asking the entrepreneur just some follow-up questions. Um, so we're about to go. We're gonna launch in order. Oh, I forgot about my judging criteria. So that is part of um, traditional, what we've always done with Willis Float is you're looking for the float criteria. Funds used efficiently, likelihood of repayment, on-time on entry to market, um, addresses the unfilled need or want, target market is identified. Um, so those are, those are parts of that. So as I mentioned, they're each having a prize. So from the launch stage, which is zero to 25,000 in revenue, the first place is 3,000. Um, up and running stage, which is 25,000 or more in revenue, is also 3,000 for the first place. And then our people's choice. So that's part of you guys being in the chat. The people's choice will be able to vote on all seven entrepreneurs, and the winner of that will receive $1,000. So you guys will get a poll that will pop up on your screen. So you'll be able to to vote automatically um, for your people's choice. So be on the lookout for that. Well, let's, uh, let's get started. So without further ado, our first pitch of the day is Shantae Knox with Deliver Her Thim Care. Shantae. Hi, I'm Shantae Knox, founder and CEO of Deliver Her Thim Care. I'm also the inventor of the A New Clean Cup. 
I, like 34% of the women in the United States, experience heavy flow during my cycle. Super Plus tampons last two hours max. I had to plan my activities around the availability of restrooms, and I couldn't wear light colors during my cycle because of the fear that would follow when my tampon inevitably leaked. Just like 67% of the 247 women that we interviewed during our customer discovery, I was dissatisfied with my period protection. That all changed one day when a friend introduced me to menstrual cups. I instantly fell in love with the collection capacity. However, I was dissatisfied during removal. Even so, I thought this would be the perfect period protection if only it absorbed the mess. At that moment, the idea for the A New Clean Cup was born. I set out on a mission to make the cups better. I now hold two issue patents for the A New Clean Cup. I wear white during my cycle, and I carry on like I'm not on. Now, I want women everywhere to experience the same freedom that I enjoy, which has led me to the challenge of bringing my product to the masses. I chose a direct-to-consumer path. Deliver is a direct-to-door, personalized period subscription service that addresses the unmet needs of women during their cycle. We're like a one-stop shop for periods. We provide perfect period protection, pain relief, snacks to satisfy cravings, along with bath, beauty, and body products for pampering at a time when we need it most. We take the stress out of PMS. Someone you know or love has a period. And although women are alike in that regard, each woman experiences her period differently. Women visit our site, they take a short period quiz, and we personalize a custom subscription box with products that meet their specific needs and it's delivered directly to our door. Although our product is ideal for menstruating women all over the world, our main focus is the US right now, where there are more than 50 million menstruating women between the ages of 18 to 55 who spend roughly $3 billion a year on feminine sanitary care products alone. Of this group, 12% prefer cups. Our initial target market are women who already use cups, specifically women who prefer disposable cups. We're the only disposable cup that absorbs. Traditional menstrual cups only collect. There's one other disposable cup on the market and women love it, but they complain that it's too messy. As we gain traction in the marketplace, we intend to expand our operation to include retail stores so that we become available everywhere that other leading brands are purchased. So, if, you, <laughs> if you're into personalized period subscription, if you're into personalized products, a personalized subscription, including products that address personal needs specific to the individual user, not one size fits all, delivered directly to your door, then you should choose Deliver Her. Do yourself a favor, visit DeliverHer.com and order your subscription now. It's the next best thing to not having a period, period. Judges, does anyone have any questions for Shante? I've got a question. This is Jonathan. Yeah. And I mean, I look like I could speak into this much, but I live in a house full of females. I'm the only male. They're not happy. I'm not happy. Um, but I have a question about the invention. Like how far along from a, uh, you know, how do you protect that invention from other people just copying that? Like, t tell me a little bit about that. Okay, so menstrual cups have been around since 1933. And what we have patented, we have two patents on the new clean cup. We, what we've done is basically taken the collection capacity of cups and combined it with the absorbent qualities of tampons and sanitary napkins. So what our patent our utility patent and our design patent covers is the absorbent liner. Menstrual cups, um, the first menstrual cup was patented a long time ago, so that patent expired. What we have the patent on is the absorbent liner. So anyone wanting to create an absorbent cup has to license the technology from us for the next 19 years. Nice. That's great. Thank you. I have a question, Shante. So um, what was the cost for, these are disposable cups? Yes, they are disposable. Um, and then I'm still, this is not a product I'm f familiar with. I've heard of them, but I have not used them. I don't know if that's TMI, but um, 
So when you, so you talked about in the beginning, the mess, your patent, it's, it's a um, solution for the mess of using a traditional cup. Is that what yes. you saying? Okay. So the liner is in the cup or it comes with the cup. Okay, so the way our cup is constructed, the liner is included in the cup. Um, it occupies the space of a contraceptive diaphragm, so it sits directly underneath the cervix where the fluid flows from, leaving the vaginal canal completely unobstructed, unlike traditional bell-shaped cups. It's a different okay. shape, but the liner is included on it so it doesn't get lost inside of you. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, I have a quick question. Um, around, <clears throat> excuse me, around distribution and your, your target market. I think that's a great place to start. Um, how do you start, how, what are your plans or thoughts around educating to get more uh, women that may be interested um, engaged with not just your product, but the, the, the broader industry overall as it, you know, moving from tampons and other tools into cups? Is there, a, there are thoughts around how you wanna educate and start to build awareness around the product? Yes, so the model that we're following um, is the model for the Inset Soft Cup and also for the Ipsy Beauty Box subscription, uh, which has sold over 100 million beauty boxes. Michelle Fine, she went to social media and um, social bloggers. So since periods are usually taboo and women don't discuss them, Social media is an easy way for us to connect and engage with each other when it comes to sharing information like this. So we intend, should we win, we intend to use the funds to ramp up our social media interaction and launch our social media campaign to gain more awareness. And Shante, you have sales of these cups already? No, the cup is in phase two of development we've created our prototype, so now we want to do testing, although the FDA doesn't require testing because it's substantially equivalent. Um, we don't have to do testing as of 2015, they made us exempt. We wanna do testing on our own to assure the safety, efficacy, and biocompatibility of the cups. So that's the next phase for the cup. Okay. John, have you have you experimented yet with the boxes yet? These these are any of the, is any of uh, like done some test marketing with that at all for what are the products will be in there or how how that would work? Yes, with the subscription boxes, what we've done is ask women what products they like and what products they want during their cycle. And we've also created a custom quiz. If you go to deliver.com, our site is in beta right now but our web developer has worked on an algorithm that picks specific products based on the products that women tell us they want and they like during their cycle. So we've identified categories um, that women have in common. Women have cravings, but we have different cravings. Some women have salty cravings, some women have sweet cravings, some women want chocolate, um, some women have cramps, some women have headaches. Some women have back aches. So we experience our periods, but we all experience them differently. So instead of making a one size fits all solution, we personalize it by utilizing that personalized quiz to put the, the products that they specifically want for their box. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Shante. That was wonderful. Thank you to all the um, folks giving her shout outs. Y'all are doing exactly what we asked. So thank you, Shante. Um, up next, we have Keela Jackson Harris with Coyote Gallery. Keela. Thank you so much for taking this time to meet with us today. I am Keela Jackson Harris, co owner and co curator of Coyote Gallery, a creative art outlet and venue, also co owned and co curated by my husband, Jody Harris. So, who are we? You've probably passed us before on 756 East MLK Boulevard. We're located in the nondescript white high building and you probably never even knew what was on the inside of Suite 200. Well, welcome to our sacred space. Coyote Gallery is where art, love, and soul reside. As you see, and as you will see, this picture captures most of what Coyote Gallery holds near and dear to our hearts. We are an art gallery in the fact that we exhibit art, sell art, create art, and we also safely offer our space as a creative outlet for the community to come together to collaborate, 
and create its own memories of art, love and soul too. Here you see world-class artists of different media and disciplines all creating, vibing, and thriving together in a curated element of love and creativity that is needed now more than ever. Whether our customers and uh, friends experience this unique essence of creativity in person or virtually, our mission is to provide the outlet that offers art and so much more. So let's be honest. Currently, we have no competitors who offer our unique menu of artistic services and multidisciplinary programming. As the only Black-owned and curated art gallery in Chattanooga, we offer a unique perspective and fill a cultural niche that is currently undeserved. Our current space is intimate and boutique size, yet our vision is not. As we have gained rapid momentum within the city and region, we have a clear and simple five-year plan to expand our programming, improve our products offered, and update our space. Although we actually opened our doors as a labor of love, love in October 2019, 2020 has now proven that we provide art, love, and soul, and it's much desired and much missed given our personal and uh, personal connections during the pandemic. So as people have pivoted into a home-based lifestyle, our online art exhibits gallery tours, artist talks, retail line, virtual art classes and events have proven to be well received and supported. Our customer is everyone, anyone who needs a connection right now during this time and a creative outlet is our customer. In conclusion, by investing in Coyote Gallery as a launch business, we know that you are investing in a strong and sustainable venture. So please continue to remember us as you vote for the launch category of Will This Float? Thank you to all of our partners and our supporters and our fellow business uh, business here in this competition with us. Thank you for attending. You are a valued partner to come. Please feel free to contact us via social media, email, or our website at www.coyote.com. <laughs> Thank you so much, Keila. Judges, I'll let you guys jump in. Uh, Keila, I, I love it. I'm a art history major um, and, and, and also a marketer. So I, I love the positioning and I love where you decided to, to set up your space. And I understand the labor of love aspect. Tell us a little bit more about the, uh, the customer type, right? So tell us a little bit more like who, who will patronize this business today? And then also who are some of the, the customers you would like to expand to um, in the coming years, as you mentioned, your, your, you know, within your five-year plan. Okay, thank you so much. Right now, we currently have a very diverse customer base. We have parents who are looking to enroll their children in enrichment activities now that uh, the school system is currently in the state of what it is with um, art being taken out. And so we have uh, art classes, we have sip and paints. So any group, uh, smaller groups who want to come and enjoy our um, ambiance here, we do that as well as virtual classes. So we have merch, we also have um, virtual tours and online um, events. Right now we're wrapping up a concert series that's uh, really grown uh, really hugely in the past few weeks. It's an eight week series. And so we've gotten uh, over 3,000 views, close to 5,000 views. And so right now our customer base is large and we're hoping, aiming to, to just expand it throughout the, the, the world, actually, to be honest with you. We feel we have something special. Awesome. Kayla, Jonathan, um, I, I love this too. Um, is t tell me tell me a little bit about um, how you are uh, doing some of the creative related programming that's tied to some of these events, like as you're working on that. Okay, so with us, we, um, my husband and I, we actually we are artists and educators, and so with my background in education, we are tying a lot of our um, the, the arts classes geared towards the youth, geared towards the community that fuels our programming. Also with um, just the support that we have, we've gotten suggestions on what our community and what people desire to see programmed. We do have a strong Atlanta base. As a matter of fact, some of our pieces have been acquired by the Tyler Perry studio. And so our Atlanta friends have, have given us a heads on up 
on what's uh, really popping down in Atlanta. And so we brought some of that here to Chattanooga in the, the form of offering poetry event, or we will be offering poetry events, definitely our concert series, because right now we don't have Levitt. So we, we are just uh, we're having our programming focused on what's, what's possibly going to be important to us in this area. Uh, I have a question about the gallery um, itself. So um, the image that you shared during the presentation, I thought was really, was really beautiful. Um, I saw musicians, but then I saw, also saw art on the walls. Can you tell us a little bit about how you're you know, curating the gallery itself? And then also, are those pieces for sale? And, and what does that look like as it relates to your business model? What portion of that will, will make up your, um, your, overall, um, uh, your overall revenue? Oh, thank you. That's a great question. That picture was uh, taken by the wonderful John Adams, local treasure, Jay Adams photography. And with that, we definitely, it captured everything with our gallery. Yes, all art, all art is for sale. And um, any piece that we have can be converted into merchandise, either in t-shirt, print or mug form. And so with the art that's exhibited, uh, we do have um, a strong social media presence. Things may be purchased via Instagram, Facebook, and via our website as well. And with uh, the curation, my husband and I pretty much curate based upon what the aesthetic is that we're trying to, to achieve. And normally with us, if, if it feels right to us, our customers, our visitors, they vibe with it too. They can dig it. And so um, that, that fuels our curation as well as uh, these pieces primarily are our works only just because of the pandemic. And it's easier for us as we are trained artists to just create and, and exhibit. However, with our current art exhibit that's in, uh, that's in rotation right now, that does feature local artists, lo local visual artists. And so the curation just basically is a flow, uh, an organic flow of, of how we, we feel our studio space and our gallery space should feel. Awesome. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Keela. It's Thank great you. to see you. Congratulations. Thank you, too. Thank All you all right. so much. Yeah, you're welcome. So up next, uh, we have Ty Turner with Turner ATM. Ty. Hi there. Hi, everyone. I'm Ty Turner, CEO of Turner ATM. We are a startup family-owned ATM distribution company. Our desire is to be there for life's fun and intimate moments. When life turns fun, we'll fund it. Like any family, we all carry distinct strengths that keep things running optimally. Turner ATM is no different. I myself have a finance and business background, which I leverage as CEO. Our chief of sales has a nonprofit and creative background, which he uses to find innovative and cost-effective ways to establish our brand. Tyrone, he's, he has a military and public education background, so he keeps things rolling and identifies those optimal locations for our machines. We have recognized the need for accessibility to cash for individuals and small businesses. Even through our current climate, as we proceed through a pandemic, there are certain factors that have been elevated, like the restriction to capital and access. And that's where we come in by stepping in to provide access to passive income and a means to reduce credit card fees for operational growth and sustainability. We don't think our competitors, big banks and other distributors are organically vested in our community in a mutually beneficial way. Currently, we are in contractual negotiations with the black owned business to place our first machine in downtown Chattanooga. We offer permanent cash services for our brick and mortar businesses and temporary solutions for our road shows and pop up events by providing a mobile ATM or a temporary machine. Uniquely, we don't require any form of startup capital from our business partners. Instead, they experience a steady flow of passive income from their share of transaction fees generated from machine use. All partners are guaranteed a return on investment, with their only investment being the physical space they provide for the placement of our machine. The income generated by winning this contest would be used to purchase an additional ATM debt-free, allowing us to pass on savings to our business partners, fulfilling our mission to provide transparent and mutually beneficial service. This supports our long-term goal to create sustainable growth, which extends to Turner ATM 
and our own future sales group that we will empower to garner contracts on behalf of Turner ATN and be compensated with continuous commission. To reach that goal, we must continue to build our operational reach, one machine at a time. And that's where you guys come in, by providing this opportunity to fund that goal and expose ourselves so that now as you guys continue to go about life, if you spot a business that could benefit from our cash services, think of Turner ATM and let us know. And please do that by sending us a note at turneratm at gmail.com. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Ty. It's wonderful. All right, judges, let you guys jump in. I can start. Um, so I, I have a question around uh, positioning. So ATMs are, you know, inherently location-based. They're all around uh, where you place them. So what are your thoughts and what is your approach? Um, and what are, you, what are some of the tools that you're using to, to determine the best place to uh, put your ATMs or through, if it's through a partner network, network or relationship? Just tell us a little bit more about uh, placement and um, access and your decision. Um, decision-making process yeah. of course and you're spot on in your in your assumptions and that it very much so is dependent on location and so we follow the foot we follow the feet and that's finding those high foot traffic areas we all live day to day so it's putting our brand name out there so people know about Turner ATM using our own personal network so that when people are experiencing life and they're like, dang, like there should really be some cash access here. They let us know that. And we do the same thing. We go out and canvas and we find those places and we ask them like, hey, do you know what your numbers are? Like how many people do you have coming through here each day? And we use that to put in our profit margin to identify if there's enough transactions available for us to be beneficial there. Hey, Todd, um, quick question, sort of follow up on that. I was thinking about the same one, but I didn't want to be first again. Um, Don't need to be shy. Go for it. I'm so shy. Um, uh, so, so when, you're, when you're stepping into those locations, how is that sh how has your data shifted? Because the last six months from a retail traffic and just traffic in general shifted. How has your short-term, long-term strategy change for where these go? Um, definitely. Um, in a few ways, it changes, but in a few ways, it, it stays exactly the same. Um, we want to be profitable no matter the dynamic, no matter the climate. So we still focus on those transaction numbers. And so even though we are in a con, you know, restricted environment, it's asking, what are those numbers right now? Because to your exact point, if they're good right now, they're going to be great once pandemic is gone. So we kind of keep the same metrics to look for our locations and we expect that they'll generate at an even higher return once things, you know, proceed with better climate. Thank you so much, Ty. It was exciting to hear what you guys are doing. That's awesome. Well, and up next, um, this will be the fourth pitch in our launch category. We have Jonathan Hardaway with SAFE. Thank you, Jonathan. Good afternoon. Our product is the SAFE Smart Life Delivery Box. Our founding team, is Christopher Brown, who's Chief Technology Officer with 10 years experience in software engineering, and myself, Jonathan Hardaway, with 20 plus years in logistics and supply chain management. We are SAFE, a smart lock security company dedicated to protecting your belongings from package thieves. So why would someone need a smart lock delivery box? Porch pirates. Porch pirates are a real thing. If you haven't experienced one, you probably know someone that has. A recent survey shows that four out of 10 Americans have experienced getting a package stolen from their porch. In fact, 1.7 million packages are stolen each day in America. Our solution is the safe smart lock delivery box. Not only does it look good on your porch, it's smart enough to know when a package should be delivered to it and open automatically. Once the package is inside the box, it closes and locks securely. Other features for the box is a high definition camera for video monitoring and scanning the package high capacity at eight cubic feet for large, small and medium packages, and also a phone app for remote access, getting alerts, and also tracking your packages. Some of the benefits from having this box on your porch is it secures your packages from porch pirates and theft. It protects you and your package from weather and the elements outside. And it also gives the homeowner peace of mind knowing that no one's gonna steal their package. Our target customers are homeowners 25 to 20 to 65 years of age with 55,000 plus in home uh, income and five plus delivered packages per month. As far as market and competitors, there are competitors out on the market. 
but the market is wide open. This is a brand new uh, market. Some of the big competitors are Yale and Danby, and Porch Pod is a startup company such as ours. But our competitive advantage from anything that's on the market right now is the auto opening and closing, hands-free delivery. Why is that important? If it's not easy for the delivery drivers to deliver the package, he's gonna just set it on your porch and not put it in a box. I've seen pictures of this from reviews from some of our competitors. Our distribution plan first is our pilot program. We plan to get this box on the porches of 10 early adopters so they can use it, give us feedback, and so we can get the voice of the customer, making sure that we're putting a product out there that can be used. We also plan to sell on our website and on Amazon and eventually get into big box stores such as Home Depot, Lowe's, Costco, and Sam's. So what do we need from you guys? Cash to support our pilot program, feedback and opinions, your continued support and engagement, and volunteers for our pilot. If you're interested in doing any of those things, you can contact us at any of the addresses below. Thank you for your time and consideration. Have a blessed day. Wonderful. Thank you, Jonathan. All right, judges, what questions do you guys have? Can you talk to me about this hands-free automatic opening? So this, so is it um, like if, if I'm a UPS driver, does it sense that I'm walking up with a box and then it automatically opens? And what if I have more than one package delivered to my home in one day? Yes. So if you are a delivery driver, if you will walk up to our box, put the box in front of the, put the package in front of the box, and it has a sensor that sensors motion and the camera kicks in and scans the package. Okay. Once that's done, the box not notices the package and opens up for that. And they place the package inside the box and it closes automatically. And we're using servo motors to do that. So is it, um, is it the barcode on the package? So what's to keep someone else from, what's to keep someone from mimicking a delivery person and it is the, it's the uh, tracking barcode on each package, and it's specifically for your home. The box is smart enough to know that this package should be delivered to this address based on the tracking. Okay. Hey, Jonathan. Uh, it's Jonathan. Uh, congrats on doing physical product, by the way. Any physical product uh, is really difficult to develop <laughs> and to scale. Um, so I'm curious, you've developed it, uh, if you've got a pretty good handle on how to, how to make a lot of them, if, if the sales actually go well. Yeah, that's something that we're still working on. Uh, we do have some designers, and, you know, this is actually our third prototype of this box. We changed some things up, but we're still kind of trying to figure out how we mass manufacture these boxes right now. Well, looks there, there are some options there. We can partner with some people that actually make boxes such as this for them to manufacture. But the key part of this is actually our software platform mm -hmm. and the lock, which can be used on many different products, not only this box, but all other products as well. Okay, smart. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jonathan. Uh, we appreciate you, that was a great presentation. And congratulations to all four of the pitches that we just heard from the launch category. So everyone give them a little shout out in the chat um, as they've just completed. So we're moving on. Um, we're going into the up and running stage. So we are gonna hear from three entrepreneurs that have $25,000 or more in revenue. And our first up is Cassandra Tucker with Divine Purity. Cassandra. Hi everyone, my name is Cassandra Tucker and I'm the founder, owner, and curator for Divine Purity. Divine Purity is my self-care product line that I developed that utilizes the power of aromatherapy to aid in the health of your emotional well-being. We are family owned and operated right here in Chattanooga. Well, I'm the beauty of the brains behind the product. My husband Ray is responsible for most of the uh, production and occasionally our two sons help. I've been doing this now full time since November 1st, 2014, and this is what sustains our family. My grandmother is the reason why I do Divine Purity. This is how I honor her. She was more than just my grandmother, she's my mom. My husband and I had the pleasure of taking care of her from August 2009 until she passed away in November 2011. 
Each recipe that I've created is infused with love, healing, strength, courage, dignity, and wisdom. These are all things that she instilled within me. I've spent over eight years researching and developing my products, and I found my approach to be very different. Scientific research shows that our sense of smell, emotions, and memory are linked because they're all processed through our limbic system. I want you for a moment to take a trip down memory lane. Who remembers Play-Doh? How do you, do you remember the smell of it? You're automatically morphed back into maybe kindergarten, first grade. You're sitting there with your peers, you're making cool things with your Play-Doh. That's exactly how we approach emotional healing. Our candles, for example, are not just named what they're named because, they're, because the names are cute. They're named what they're named because each candle is intentional. For example, our mantra candle is fragrance with vanilla, sandalwood, and amber. Vanilla is known for its calming and soothing effect, which makes this the perfect candle to use during meditation or prayer time. We use our fragrances to shape your experience, your healing experience. People are not buying what we do. They are buying how we make them feel. These are some testimonials to actually show how people feel about Divine Purity. Uh, we've been doing this for really for a while and our heart and soul is in it. Our journey started when we started selling our products at the Chattanooga market in the earlier part of 2014. We started off with four basic products and now we currently make bottled and label over a dozen products. Many of them have variations in fragrances, and plus we're sold in more than 15 stores nationwide, and we've had the pleasure of shipping all the way to Alaska, Hawaii, and even China. Locally, our products can be found at the stores that's listed on your screen, and I will say our growth has been organic over the years, and it's been, it's, it's been steady as well. So if you guys choose us, the funds will actually help to expedite our growth and reach more of our target audience by increasing our marketing and branding budget. Thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you so much, Cassandra. That was wonderful. All right, judges, I'll let you guys hop in. Cassandra, uh, my, my wife would be, uh, she's going to be a customer. She loves things that, um, she's really into aromatherapy and really into making sure that our, her spaces are always smell good. Um, tell me a little bit about your, your R and D. So you, you mentioned how you actually, uh, design these products with, you know, a lot of intentionality, but tell us about your, your actual, what goes, what do you, how are you actually matching up scents with moods and things of that nature, but then also about a little bit more about your production process. Um, that would be helpful. Okay. So, um, as far as how we match up scents, what we do, we send out samples to our friends, family. Um, we have a checklist for people to be able to check off how it made them feel. Um, with the research that I've done, there are certain smells that, that actually enhance our moods um, because of the way that they're processed. So that's the first thing. And as far as production is concerned, you're actually in a part of our lab right now. And so um, I've thoroughly researched all the ingredients that actually go into every one of our products. Okay, thank you. Cassandra, con congrats on getting a product out there. Um, love the story. Um, one question I have for you, you know, big milestone to get it into retail and start getting it into stores a little bit. Your, the next step for this, do you see a lot more on the retail side, a lot more on the online side. Are you going to try to do, you know, more of one than the other? Like, what does that look like going forward for you? Okay, so since the pandemic, I will say our online sales have increased. Um, I do want to increase visibility online. However, I do see myself having, and like my end goal is to have a wellness center. I want to have a retreat center that actually caters to emotional wellness. So that's my, my overall, and Divine Purity just happens to be the gateway into that arena. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. Wonderful presentation. Thank you. And uh, next up that we have is Brandon Ellis with Chatterbox Cafe. Brandon. How's everybody doing? Okay, can you hear me? 
Yes. Okay. All right. My name is Brandon Ellis, and I'm the owner of Chatterbox Cafe, where we specialize in southern wood-fired barbecue and barbecue supplies. Uh, I'm a transplant uh, to Chattanooga by way of Franklin, Kentucky. Uh, as a child, my family raised hogs, tobaccos, and produce. Uh, many times we spent uh, uh, spent events around the dinner table socializing with friends and family, where in most cases the food would have been grown right out back. Uh, after relocating to Chattanooga, I realized there were tons of options for barbecue, but none that treated it like an art. Uh, focusing on consistency, passion, and the willingness to grow with the industry. Uh, my goal is to create a barbecue culture that will allow customers to understand and appreciate what it takes to make quality barbecue, as well as giving them access to the, to the tools and the knowledge to do so at home. Currently, we offer food truck and catering our restaurant, and retail sales. Our retail sales consist of online sales direct to consumer through our restaurant, as well as wholesale to local businesses such as Spec Meats. Our restaurant currently services, services customers Wednesday through Saturday from 11 to 8. Um, our food trucks cater a, a wide variety of private and public events. Um, our restaurant... Uh, during the pandemic, a lot of restaurants suffered uh, financial loss, which ultimately put uh, restaurant workers out of business and out of work. Uh, a lot of them were overqualified uh, for the places that they've been working anyway. So we decided to hire them and bring them on, knowing that we needed qualified workers, and at some point sales would pick up. Um, myself, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've opened and, and maintained three businesses. Uh, I'm a pit master who competes regularly in uh, the barbecue circuit. Brittany, who handles our catering and our sales, has 10 years experience in the restaurant business and the majority of those being in customer service. Jody, who's our restaurant manager, has 20 years experience in restaurants, 15 of those years being in management and startup. What we noticed during the pandemic was that most people are social distancing, spending lots of time at home. The, the spike in sales of grills and grill supplies show that people are consuming barbecue in the comforts of their own home. Most of these people are searching and making purchases via online. This is the piece of our company that's making money without consuming too much of my time. We have the knowledge, the tools, and the team to be a real competitor in this market. I plan to use the money to increase production on additional products, implement a marketing strategy, and purchase equipment to increase efficiencies. Um, I hope that you all guys, I hope you guys enjoy the, pro, the excuse me, the presentation. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach us at chatterbox423.com. Thank you, Brandon. I can attest to his barbecue being fantastic. Oh, yeah, Brandon, thanks for presenting two days before I can actually eat any of it, you know. <laughs> no problem. We, we'll take care of you when you're ready. <laughs> um, Brandon, thanks for making everyone here hungry. So congratulations. You, you won that award <laughs> for sure. Um, tell us a little bit about your, your recipe. So you, you talk about it as an art form. I'm imagining that you put the same kind of love into your recipes for your dry rubs and, and your sauces. Tell me a little, yeah. Tell us a little bit about how you, how you go about doing that. Do you have a test kitchen? Do you just yes. try, you know put something on on the ribs? Like, tell us about that that process. So, so the the bulk of our recipes start out by things that I enjoy. I enjoy as a kid around my friends and family. Uh, recipes that uh, that I've taken from from in laws and brother-in-law, sister-in-laws. And uh, I like to take recipes that we all love and kind of put my twist on them. Uh, I feel with barbecue and cooking in general, every type of culinary um, direction that you go, whether it's barbecue or soul food or Cajun, they all have a, 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 a certain amount of base ingredients. And those ingredients are something that we've came accustomed to when eating those particular kinds of food. So I always start my recipes with the base that we've become accustomed to, and then I put my twist on it. Uh, a lot of people ask me, what kind of barbecue do we have? Is it Memphis? Is it North Carolina, South Carolina? Um, I like to call it transplant barbecue because we like to touch on the core parts of barbecue but put our own twist on it so everybody can relate to it, but it also allows us to take their palate to the next level. Very cool. Very cool. All 
All right, I've got another quick question for you, Brandon. Um, okay. You know, I, I, I love your barbecue. And I have a lot of respect for you. I have a lot of respect for what you've done. Um, stepping into packaged goods, selling products, a big deal. How do you see that going forward? Uh, I, I feel like the sky's the limit with it. Um, originally, when we started doing the packaged products, uh, it started because we were buying over-the-counter products, which were kind of fit in the, in, the, in the line of competition rubs and barbecue. Uh, but when the pandemic hit, the supply became inconsistent. So we reverted back to making our own rubs ourselves. And in doing that, people would consist consistently ask for our rubs and our sauces. Uh, we got with a co-packer, uh, nailed down our recipes, and began to make rubs for retail sales. It was kind of twofold. It allowed us to cut the costs on our products internally within the business, as well as make money off the products that we were already making and sell them to customers. Um, with people looking online for rubs and, and researching rubs, you know, it allows us to use our YouTube channel to give them the knowledge as well as provide an online sales to give them the tools to do what they do at home. Uh, we know that everybody's not going to want to cook barbecue at home every time they want it, which they'll still come and patronize our business. But we also want to give them the tools to do it when they want and be successful at it. Thanks, Brandon. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brandon. Thank you. And moving to our last um, and the final pitch of the up and running category, let's welcome Andrew, Amber Woodruff with Little Giggles. Amber. All right. Hi. Can everyone hear me? You can. All right. So I am Amber Woodruff, and I'm the nanny and the owner of the business Little Giggles. I started back in 2017 when I came out of the classroom setting. I've been an educator for 10 years, but I wanted to do something a little bit different than the classroom setting. So I decided to step away for a bit and try to create some services that provided a more intimate setting, which would be nannying. So um, from 2017 to now, I've been able to create event care services. So if there was a conference or something and you needed child care for those that are, were attending, or if you had a wedding and you didn't really want children to attend, I provided care for that. Or if you just had a late night meeting or you needed a date night, which most parents tend to lose sometimes and you don't really want to call grandma or anything, I was the person to call. So we kind of became more like family to the clients that I've had with over the years. Um, so with that, um, <laughs> I've been able to get a market of families that like non-traditional care because most daycares have nine to five hours. I work with the family's hours. So however you need me, if I have that availability, you can call me. There's my calendar on my website, which is www.googlegiven.com. I have bookings that way. And with growing now, with COVID, I've had to keep my business or my clientele limited to five families, which isn't much because I'm the only person behind my business. I provide the care and I'm the only one handling the behind the scenes also. So with growing into a drop-in center, I don't want to expand to a traditional or preschool type setting. Drop-in care is like the combination. You have a curriculum of the regular traditional preschool, and you also have the combination of an indoor playground, kind of, so to speak. So if you drop your kids off into what I'm hoping to grow, which I've used these funds for, is securing a building for my services, then you get to you get the freedom and the flexibility of drop-in hours that aren't preschool hours. So that's what I'm looking to more so use the money for. Um, within COVID or within this pivot of my business, a lot of people wanted online tutoring or assistance with curriculum and stuff like that. So with my educational background, I've been able to help kids that way, but I've only been able to take so many numbers. But with the drop-in center and license, you are able to have 15. So I'll get to maximize my clientele still within that way. And in, with safety being an issue, people are still wanting low numbers, but with it just being me, I'll be able to create more jobs or an, another team or so. I won't be the only person providing childcare. So I get to grow as in the way of helping more families instead of just five, and I'll be able to get a an actual team of caregivers, so it won't just be me. Um, I've also been able to launch a book and a plush animal within my, my brand. So 
my teddy bear and stuff that has come along through the through COVID that goes with our with our basically our mascot for the schooling or my um, program, and I also have a book. So even with Little Giggles now, I have merch that goes with my services and talks about certain things within like nannying. So it kind of gives tips and stuff within childcare or how to prepare or use a nanny or my services. So. Thank you for listening to my pitch. And I mentioned before, if you have any questions or want to learn more about my services, the website is www.googlegiving.com. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amber. Anyone have questions? I feel like this is one I can chime in on as a single mom of two kids. I'm, in, I'm curious, um, as I'm looking at all the things you offer, I'm curious about your capacity. Yes, ma'am. Um, so you do drop in after work. You physically drop into these families' homes or they bring the kids to you? So I offer everyone, they have the ability to book me for drop off into my home or I come to you. Um, since COVID, a lot, I actually thought that people would rather me come into their home, but they've still utilized in-home drop off. So I offer both. Um, yeah. But with the same with getting a building, of course, I wouldn't be able to go to home. I'm trying to get dropped into an actual physical spot. But the services that I offer now, you have the choice of me coming to you or you coming to me. And in addition to that, when you're not dropping into the families, you're tutoring online. Yes, ma'am. In the book, in the, in the merch. Yes, ma'am. I offer t-shirts and just because my logo is like cute or just like to get it out there. The, um, the teddy bear just came with, <laughs> I like teddy bears and kids do too. So I was just like, my mascot or my logo is a teddy bear. So let's just put it in like play form. So that's how I came up with that. And then I've always liked literacy and a lot of kids when they come to me, I have books and blocks. So besides that, I think reading is really important. So I was blessed with the time to sit still in COVID. I came up with the children book so this particular one is about social and emotional things like if you're dropping off a child in school and if they're having a bad day or something like that like what parents can do within the child's love language to help them like with school or if they're having a bad day school or something like that so I do have that which will also be inside of the center because we have it so the merchant stuff will be also available to the kids to use inside the drop-in and also for purchase as well and then my last question is around pricing. I may have uh, missed it, but the drop-in, what's your, is it, uh, what if I have two kids at home versus someone else that has maybe four kids? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so how do you? So even how I do my services now, I do offer like 25% discounts for siblings. The same pricing kind of scale will accommodate for when I get the actual building. There'll be discounts for siblings and the same with, so it's kind of like having babysitting instead of coming to your house, going to the building. It'll be a per hour situation. You don't use it daily, so it won't be like a weekly price. It'll be a per hour or per day situation. We'll also have sort of memberships, which I kind of have now because there are families that I'm, I do contractual work right now. So some families I'm with Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, or Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So the same thing apply there. You'll be able to enroll your kids at the drop-in for part-time, full-time, or just by the day or by the hour. Okay, perfect. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Amber. Uh, congratulations to everyone. We've just concluded all seven pitches. So a little, little uh, hand clapping shout out in the chat. Uh, so right now we're gonna let our judges deliberate and submit their votes. So judges, we'll make sure that you're, viewed, you're muted um, and you guys can submit your scores right now. Um, and audience, so this is the moment that you guys have been waiting for. So you guys are gonna have a chance to vote for the people's choice for a prize of $1,000. Um, for each for our entrepreneurs so this should have just popped up on your screen and if you guys will vote and choose your top and so we'll play some um, quick ads for our sponsors while the judges deliberate and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes y'all y'all stay tuned we're here you're doing great I'm right here there's Jack I'm right here <laughs> Being here matters now more than ever. 
As a Tennessee not-for-profit with a mission to serve, we've made a promise to be right here for you today and tomorrow. If you need anything else, we'll be right here. Where are you? Are you here? Are you there? Are you on this planet? Are you on the way? On the verge? On the brink? Are you leading the pack or just getting started? Are you stuck? Did you decide somewhere along the way that this was the only place you could be? That everywhere else was out of reach? It's a simple question. We ask ourselves constantly, where am I? Where am I going? Where am I going to end up? But that's the wrong question. It misses the point entirely. So let me ask you the right question. Where would you rather be? Now that is a question for the bold. Where would you rather be? It's a reflection of self. It centers us and sets the course. It demands a calibration to what's important. That's the question that brings us to clarity. Because knowing where you are is one thing, but knowing what you fight for and what you believe in is everything. Where would you rather be? It points us to the larger questions that will define us. What will you dare do? What does winning mean? What will you leave behind? We know that by uncovering the answers, we can navigate from where you are today to where you want to go. Together, on your side, by your side. So with that, I ask you this one more time. Where would you rather be? We won't stop until we help you get there. So let's get started. Are you coming? Picture a family consumed by constant online activity, pushing the limits of unlimited bandwidth in the device age. You're using a lot of bandwidth. Prepare to pay. My bad. It's comforting to know that there is one internet provider with no data caps or added feeds as we all cross over into the device age. Working people have trusted the financial protection benefits provided through Unum Group businesses. We protect tens of millions of individuals and families worldwide with benefits and services provided through the workplace. Our businesses, including Unum US, Colonial Life, and Unum UK, offer a range of valuable products, including short and long-term disability, life, dental, vision, accident, hospital, and critical illness insurance. What an incredible day. I'd like to thank all seven finalists for your amazing presentations and your innovation. As we get ready, I'd like to really bring uh, Justin Dawkins up from Collab Capital down in Atlanta to share a little bit about the work that they're doing um, and why that's so important to the event that we have today. Justin, you wanna share a few minutes with us? 
Absolutely. Anytime. Uh, first of all, congratulations to the seven finalists. I think they all did a wonderful job with their pitch. Um, very, uh, I love the variety. Um, and nobody, you know, who's going to hate on art and barbecue. Um, and those are all wonderful concepts and businesses of varying flavors and types. So really, really excited about that. Um, what we're doing at Collab Capital, I think, is really special and interesting and, and may work in complement with a lot of the businesses here and in the past um, that, that I know have been on this stage um, before. Um, we're really excited about our model. Our model is a little bit different than what you see in kind of the traditional capitalization space. Um, we fit squarely in the, uh, we build a product that fits squarely with the 83% of businesses that uh, are maybe too young or don't have the uh, collateral for to go get a bank loan, or maybe you just don't have the tenure, um, or you're not the size and scale that's required for venture capital. So if you think about uh, venture capital, they, they, they uh, tend to seek uh, businesses that are you know one to ten billion dollars in size. So there's a lot of opportunity for us to build um, a product, a financial product that that fits uh, more of the businesses that um, we uh, would like to see created, um, and those that are already being created today. And so. Uh, we're unapologetically investing in black innovators. Um, so really, really excited about innovations um, in the direct, direct consumer space, software and SaaS, uh, mobile and other industries um, and complementary industries. So really, really excited um, to uh, be building that with a great team um, here in Atlanta and, and hope to, to, to bring the best Atlanta has to offer as well as our financial products and services to places like Chattanooga and other, other areas in the South. Justin, thank you so much. Um, and I'd like to also thank all of our judges, uh, Jonathan Bragdon, managing partner at Capacity Capital. Jonathan and Justin are actually both recipients of a Kossman Fellowship to support their investment opportunities. You'll hear more from Capacity Capital tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, October the 20th at 3 p.m. Please go to Skedge and register for that amazing platform. And then I'd also like to thank Alexis Willis, the Director of Entrepreneurship at the Incubator and the Ch Greater Chamber of Commerce here in Chattanooga. You guys did not have an easy decision. I think we should all nod our heads at that. This was incredibly difficult. Um, but the scores have been tallied, and we do have winners in each category. And so without further ado, let's get a little group drum roll for everybody. The winner for the, la the launch stage company is Shantae Knox in Deliver Her. Woo! <laughs> Great job. Great job, Shantae. Fantastic, absolutely important product um, for all of those of us out there that understand what that, the innovation that's needed in that space. Thank you um, for putting your talents behind that product. Thank you so much. Any words you, that you wanted to say? I uh, just thank you guys so much. I've really put a lot into it and this product came out of sheer necessity. And I know other women want to enjoy the same freedom that I experienced during my period. Like I said, I wear white during my period now. So I want other women to experience this too. So thank you guys so much. Shantae, thank you so much. And now the winner for the up and running category, Cassandra Tucker and Divine Purity. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys so much <laughs> thank you for believing in me i really appreciate that <laughs> i'm <Cassandra>. thrilled <laughs> thank you cassandra thank you for your innovation and your fortitude and now we had a little bit of technical difficulty earlier so some folks may have seen it some folks may have missed it but the people's choice the audience winner here in chattanooga Jonathan Hardaway and Safe. The people's champion. Jonathan, can we bring you up for a few words? You have to sit down. Yeah, I'm sitting down now. I'm relaxed. Any words that you want to share with the people? Yes, thank you so much for um, allowing us to participate in this uh, challenge. Thank you for voting for us. And hopefully, you know, we, we put some of the, the ways that you can contact us. And if you're interested in being one of the uh, 10 people that we choose for our pilot program, please do so. Jonathan, thank you so much and congratulations. And I'd like to thank the team. I'd like to thank Colab, Collab Capital, um, and the Urban, the Urban League of Greater Chattanooga uh, for the support of this Will This Float Black Founders Edition. This is our first big event of Startup Week. We've got over 80 events throughout the, uh, throughout the week 
that are going to be incredible opportunities for us to share more opportunities that entrepreneurs can build, manage, and scale their, their opportunities and can build, manage, and scale their companies. Again, upcoming events this week. Uh, you'll hear more from Katie this afternoon with Finding Your Funding. A few folks found their funding today. Uh, we have an incredible uh, uh, fireside chat and blog or podcast uh, with Tommy Kale, the director of Hamilton, on Thursday. Everybody, if you remember from Hamilton, you got to take your shot. We had seven people that took their shot today, and so that was outstanding. Um, and then I think with the number of females that were represented, the women entrepreneurs that were represented on today's panel, um, something that we're really trying to understand how to do better in this COVID environment is the plight of working moms, how to show up and show out. And so Katie Hendricks, who was our MC for today, will be leading that um, with a number of other female entrepreneurs from the Chattanooga region. Again, thank you so much and have a great startup week. Take care.